I'd like to start by saying that this testimony, which arrived by email, left a deep impression on me as I read it. Welcome back to Heaven's Gate. I'm Emmanuel, and I warmly invite you to subscribe to the channel and make yourself comfortable, because this story promises to be one of the most beautiful you've ever heard. Before we begin, though, remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, hit the like button on this video, and comment Amen to let me know that you'll be here with me today, joining me on this journey. Your support is a blessing to me. Thank you from the heart. That evening was cold and calm, one of those evenings where everything seemed suspended, as if waiting for something. I was traveling by car with my mother, returning home after a normal day, marked by the usual commitments. I was lost in my thoughts, looking out the window and observing the distant lights of the city. I was talking to my mother about the little daily things, telling her the details of the day and my plans for the future. I had no idea that this would be the last conversation before my life changed forever. A sudden flash illuminated the road ahead of us. It was a split second. A truck appeared out of nowhere and the car swerved. I heard the screeching of the brakes, the violent crash of metal against metal, and then, darkness. A thick silence fell around me. A silence so deep it seemed unreal. When I reopened my eyes, I was standing on a deserted road, but not the one where we had the accident. There was no longer the sound of traffic or the city lights. In front of me, only darkness and a cold, oppressive atmosphere. I felt a shiver of fear and looked for my mother, but I was completely alone. Where am I? I wondered, hugging my arms to my chest as if to protect myself. My senses seemed heightened, and every sound, every shadow, made my heart beat faster. Then I saw a figure appear in the distance. A pure and warm light surrounded it, like an aura illuminating the darkness around me. I realized that the figure was Jesus. His eyes were gentle and deep, full of infinite wisdom that seemed to embrace me entirely. I immediately felt at peace, as if all anxiety and fear vanished under his presence. Jesus, I murmured, unable to believe what I was seeing. Am I, am I dead? He looked at me with kindness, and his voice, deep and calm, resonated like an echo inside me. Sophia, you are not dead, but I must show you something. You need to see to understand. I took a deep breath, trying to stay calm. What must I see, Lord? Follow me, he said simply, extending his hand. Without thinking, I took it, and we immediately found ourselves in a different place, a place I could never have imagined seeing. Jesus had led me to a place beyond imagination. It wasn't just a place of darkness, but an oppressive and suffocating environment, where the very air seemed to press down like a weight. The sensation of cold was penetrating, as if every chill was a wound in the soul. In front of me, I saw a huge crowd of people. Many were women, some crying, while a few men were among them. I tried to take a step back, but Jesus placed a hand on my shoulder. Do not fear, he said firmly. You must see to understand. The people around me no longer seemed human. They were enveloped in an aura of sadness and suffering, with faces twisted in pain and hands raised in a gesture of desperation. I watched in horror as demon-like creatures moved among them, inflicting unspeakable torments. One of those demons approached a woman, grabbed her arm, and twisted her ear with brutal force. Her scream made my blood run cold. I felt tears fill my eyes as I watched that horrified scene. Why? Why, Lord? I murmured with a broken voice. Why must they suffer so much? These souls have chosen a path far from me, Jesus replied, looking at me with deep sadness. They have chosen the way of pleasure and deception, forgetting the value of the soul and the bond with the divine. As he spoke, I noticed that the demons had started to look at me. 
One of them slowly approached and whispered incomprehensible but hateful words to me. I felt paralyzed, unable to move. With a fierce look, another demon grabbed my arm and forced me to face one of the tortured women. Do you think you are better than them? The demon hissed, squeezing my arm until it hurt. You are like them too. You deserve this. Let me go, I shouted, trying to free myself. But Jesus intervened, placing his hand on me. The demon recoiled with a sharp cry, and I felt protected once again. I looked at Jesus with gratitude, but also with a thousand questions in my mind. Lord, why have you brought me here? I asked, trembling. Because you need to understand what awaits those who stray from the light. It is a difficult path, but necessary to comprehend the truth. Jesus led me to an area where souls were undergoing a particular torment. Among them was a young woman, beautiful, wearing an elegant dress and sparkling jewelry. However, those same jewels seemed to burn like fire against her skin, causing her unbearable pain. The woman screamed and writhed but couldn't remove those jewels that seemed to chain her. Who is she? I asked, unable to look away from that scene of suffering. She was a vain woman, Jesus replied, with a tone of bitterness in his voice. She valued only outward beauty and appearance, forgetting the purity of the heart. Now, her own ornaments are her condemnation. My heart broke seeing that young woman, and a part of me felt a reflection of guilt, thinking of all the times I had given too much importance to appearance, neglecting what was truly important. Lord, I murmured, I too have placed weight on my image. I always thought it was important to have nice clothes, beautiful jewelry, and now I see what happens to those who are enchanted by these things. Jesus looked at me with understanding and said, The soul is what matters. Beauty fades, and what remains is the essence of the heart. Always remember this. As we continued, we found ourselves in a different area where I saw people pinned to the ground, unable to move. They were young and old, men and women, and all had a burning nail in their tongues. Every time they opened their mouths, they felt the sharp pain of the burning metal. Some cried, others moaned hopelessly. Why are they suffering like this? I asked, unable to bear the sight. These are the souls of liars, Jesus replied with a tone of severity. Those who chose to lie, to betray trust, now pay the price for their false words. Every lie is a burden on the soul a debt that cannot be extinguished. I noticed that among those souls was also a child, crying and trying to free himself from the torment. Lord, he's just a child, I exclaimed. Why must he suffer like this? Even the little ones can distinguish good from evil, Jesus said, with infinite sadness in his gaze. And those who lie, even for fun, damage the purity of the soul. Every lie is a chain that leads to torment. I felt devastated, unable to accept what I was seeing. Each scene was a blow to the heart, and every word from Jesus was a lesson that penetrated deep into my soul. Jesus then took me to a vast hall, almost like a dance floor, where a multitude of people danced endlessly. Among them, I immediately recognized the face of a young man, moving rhythmically and fluidly, but with a shadow of torment reflected in his eyes. Who is he? I asked, with a premonition that made me shiver. This is Michael Jackson, Jesus replied. He was a man who was idolized on earth, but the price of his fame brought him here. I watched that man, remembering the images of him I had seen as a child, his music, his dancing. He was just a singer, I murmured. Why is he here? It wasn't just his fame, he explained, but the people who sacrificed their faith to follow him. They idolized a human being more than they loved me, and this distanced them from the truth. I looked at others around him, young and old, all dancing and trapped in an endless melody. I felt the weight of their suffering and an infinite sorrow. So even those who admire a human being too much can end up here? I asked, trying to understand. 
Idolatry is not just for stone idols. Anyone who loves something more than me, anyone who places their faith in worldly things, risks losing themselves, and these souls are now trapped in what they have chosen. After the torment of the liars and the fame admirers, Jesus led me to another room, an even more unsettling place. Here, the sound of water mixed with desperate screams, a music of suffering that seemed never to end. In front of us, a dark and boiling lake stretched out, and along its shores, tormented souls were forced to drink from large silver and burning metal cups. They looked at the cups with empty eyes, as if they contained a luxurious beverage or fine wine. But what they drank was something else entirely. Every sip was acidic and poisonous, and with every drop, they felt an unbearable pain. Lord, I said with a trembling voice, what are these people doing here? These are those who on earth gave in to the vice of alcohol, indulging in lust and excess. They couldn't help but drink, to seek unlimited pleasure, and now they are prisoners of their own thirst. They chose temporary pleasure and escape from responsibilities. Now that desire consumes them. I couldn't believe the scene before my eyes. I felt a mix of pity and repulsion for those souls, forced to drink endlessly, as if condemned to satisfy an unquenchable thirst. One of the men looked at me, his eyes red and full of terror. Take me away, he shouted, reaching out his hand to me. Please help me. I didn't know what to do. I felt paralyzed. I looked at Jesus in despair, and he, with a steady but sorrowful look, said to me, You can't do anything for them. They have chosen this path, but you can help others avoid it. I felt a crushing weight, a sense of helplessness that made me falter. Lord, I said with tears in my eyes, how can I help? How can I explain all this to others? He looked at me with kindness and said, with love and truth, show them the way, tell them what you have seen, and you will have planted a seed in their hearts. The choice will always be theirs. Jesus then took my hand and led me to a place I never imagined I would find myself. It was an area surrounded by shadows, as if a thick fog covered everything. When the fog dissipated, I saw familiar figures, my parents, my brother, and even some relatives and church friends. They were in chains, chained together, and walked aimlessly, not seeing where they were going. It felt like I had fallen into a nightmare. Lord, I said with a trembling voice, why am I here? Jesus looked at me with an expression of deep compassion. They are not dead, but alive. However, they are spiritually chained. They allowed resentment, distance from faith, and selfishness to separate them from my grace. They walk in a world of appearances, losing sight of the true meaning of life. I looked at my loved ones, helpless. Why can't they see? Why can't they free themselves from these chains? I asked, with despair choking my throat. Because every heart needs to be guided toward the light, Jesus replied. I leave their lives in your hands. It is up to you to take the first step, to plant a seed of hope and redemption. I will be with you. The weight of those words made my heart feel heavy. But Lord, I am not strong enough. I can't bear all this alone. How can I help others if I myself am full of doubts and fears? He placed his hand on my shoulder and said gently, I will give you the strength. Every word, every gesture of faith, will be a bridge to me. Every time you choose truth and love, you break one of the chains that keep them prisoners. I approached my father, trying to grasp his hand, but he seemed not to see me, as if I were invisible to his eyes. Dad, I'm here, I shouted, but he kept walking, lost in his invisible captivity. I felt my heart break and looked at Jesus in despair. Every prayer, every act of sincere love, Jesus said, is a light that can illuminate the path for those who are lost. Never underestimate the power of faith. After witnessing the sufferings of my loved ones, I felt a deep fatigue, as if I had traveled an endless journey. 
Lord, I can't see beyond. This pain is too great. But he took my hand and led me forward, saying, The journey is not yet over, Sophia. You still need to see something. I felt almost betrayed, as if the weight of that vision was too great a punishment for me. But when I looked up, I saw something that made me shiver. Before me stood a demon, enormous, with fiery eyes and a cruel smile. He watched me like a predator watches prey, and I felt pinned to the ground by his gaze. The demon advanced toward me, and I felt my body freeze. Don't think you're special, he hissed in a cold voice. You too one day will come here. You too belong to us. I tried to take a step back, but I couldn't move. I felt a cold hand grab my arm, and the pain made me scream. Jesus! I shouted with all the strength I had. Help me! Immediately, Jesus appeared beside me, his face calm and resolute. He placed his hand on my other shoulder, and an intense light exploded around us. The demon screamed and retreated, but not without casting a hateful look at me. Sophia, remember that I will always be with you, Jesus said, squeezing my hand. No one can touch your soul if you remain in my light. I felt a deep peace, as if every fear had dissolved. I looked at Jesus and understood that as long as I had faith, nothing could break me. I felt unconditional love enveloping me, a protection beyond imagination. Finally, Jesus took my hand and brought me back to the real world. When I reopened my eyes, I was in my church, surrounded by brothers and sisters from my community. I felt their hands on me, their prayers filled the air, and I felt enveloped by genuine love. A woman took my hand and whispered, Say Jesus, say Jesus. Trembling, I uttered that name with all the strength I had left. Jesus. My lips said it almost in a whisper, but it was as if a wave of peace swept through my soul, freeing me from all fear. The screams, the cries, and the sufferings I had felt in hell vanished like a shadow in the daylight. When I finally fully returned to reality, I felt exhausted, as if I had crossed an entire ocean to return. My brothers looked at me with eyes full of compassion and love. What did you see, Sophia? One of them asked. I still couldn't speak. The images of hell and the tormented souls filled my mind but I knew I had to share everything I had experienced. I had to recount my experience, not only for myself, but for all those who needed to know the truth. In the days that followed, my life changed completely. Every time I met someone, I felt the need to tell them what I had seen. I began to testify in church, to speak to the youth, to share the importance of faith and redemption. Brothers and sisters, I would say, with tears in my eyes. If you think hell doesn't exist, I tell you it is real. But also know that forgiveness and salvation are within reach if you choose to believe. Every word I spoke seemed to free a part of me, as if I were building a bridge between the world of suffering and the light of hope. I saw the faces of the people around me change. They listened attentively and many approached God with sincere hearts. The journey I had lived through had deeply marked me, but I knew it was my mission. Every testimony was an act of faith, and every soul that approached God was a new hope. Jesus had given me the strength to traverse the darkness, and now it was my task to bring that light to others.